Hey folks, uh, Jeremy with Dragons with Grassworks. We're going to do a pull to sim goblet for you today, do a demonstration, kind of a quick how to. Uh, hopefully, you'll find this interesting and informative. We have preheated our pipe a little too hot, actually. I'm going to go into the furnace, wind up my first gather of glass for this goblet. Now the glass coming out of the furnace is crystal clear. It looks orange only because it's so very hot. There's a little actually occlusion in here, a little piece of debris. Sometimes we get that in our furnace at the end of the day. I'm gonna pluck that out. And we'll continue like it never even happened. Sometimes if those pieces of debris are too big, I'll throw the whole thing away and start over. But that was just one little small piece. So shouldn't be too bad. Now I've pre-prepped some color here. This is our uh, smoky pattern or our marbled, marbled pattern. It's some gray, white, and black that have been mixed together. I'll put this on in two layers. And then I'm gonna use my tweezers to twist it up and smooth it out. On most of our work, we use larger chips of glass. We're using these smaller pieces for this pattern just because it makes a wispier uh, appearance. These small chips do have the advantage of melting in a lot faster than the larger chips. They're not as dense, uh, so the color doesn't stretch as far. So I usually have to add two layers of color when I'm using the small chips on a goblet like this as opposed to one when I'm using the larger chips. I'm going to swirl this color up using my tweezers. In this case, it's sort of similar to our tweezer twist pattern, except I'm keeping the pattern much wider, and I'm not doing full twists. I'm only going about halfway around instead of all the way. Now, anytime you use the tweezers on the glass like this, you're going to leave these big indents and divots. Uh, these can cause a problem in the next step because I've got to go back into the furnace soon and get more glass on top of this. And that glass is viscous. It's not going to flow into all those divots and pinches and it will trap large air bubbles on the surface. I don't want that to happen. So we're going to melt that in, let that heat soak into the glass and most of that texture will melt away on its own. What doesn't melt away on its own we will press out on this table. So I'm gonna move my color kind of off to the side here. We'll use that again a little later. So most of that texture is gone. There's some lumps and bumps, but that's not a big deal. We'll just press those out on this table. And you can see the glass is darkening up as it cools down. This is solid to make it hollow. I'm gonna blow into the pipe, trapping the air inside with my thumb pressure builds up. Uh, that pressure has to go somewhere as the air heats up and expands. My thumb isn't going to move, so instead that bubble is going to form inside the glass. It's going to push against the glass. It takes a little bit of time at first, but once you break the surface tension and that glass starts moving, uh, it moves out of the way pretty quickly. Sometimes it needs a little encouragement with some extra heat, but I think it's starting to move now. There it goes just starting to bulge back at the end of the color and we'll give it a little more air to finish moving that out of the way so uh, this is pretty cold now i'm going to go back in the furnace here in just a moment and gather more glass on top i want to make sure it's really good and cold before i do so you can usually tell the temperature just by that color of the moil this clear area down here, it's pretty dark, uh, so I know that there's not a lot of movement left. If I tap on the glass, it really is not moving at all. It's not denting, it's not making a, a hollow sound. So I know that that's good and hot. I'm gonna go back in the furnace and gather up my next gathered glass and start shaping that up. There's a few different ways you can shape this second gather of glass. A lot of glassworks like to use wooden shaping blocks. Uh, some glass blowers just shape it right on the marble as they come out. I personally prefer paper that's been soaked in water. This will allow me to grab that glass and squeeze it into shape. And 
Now with a pulled stem goblet, I like to pull a lot of extra clear glass down to the bottom of the piece. Uh, that's ultimately going to become the stem of our wine glass. I'm going to go back into the furnace, reheat this whole thing. Anytime that you touch glass with a, uh, anytime you touch glass with a tool, or if you leave it out in the open air for too long, it cools down and and so you need the glass really hot before you start shaping it. I was trying to bring my hose over but I got tangled up so I'm gonna go back and grab that and then I'm gonna come back and finish heating this up. The advantage of working with a hose is that you can either work by yourself or have your assistants doing other things in the process. The disadvantage is sometimes you get tangled up so this hose is gonna allow me to blow through the piece and use tools on it at the same time. Now one thing I like to do on a full stem goblet is I'll actually start blowing here at the marver while I'm cooling what will be the stem of the glass. Now when I sit down at the bench, I'll use my jacks to start squeezing down the jack line so I can remove the piece from the uh, blowpipe. And I'll continue to shape and blow out the cup area of our glass. So I'll use the jacks to squeeze down right here, inflate a little bit as I'm doing so. Let's establish the stem, so I'm going to start squeezing down. and inflate at the same time. Tighten up that jack line. Now I'm pulling out that stem a little bit and then pushing back. And what this is doing is starting the stretch of the stem without pulling the bubble into uh, the stem. You see, if your bubble from your cup goes down into your stem, it's really hard to clean it. Uh, and we don't want that to be unusable because there's a bubble down there. So try really hard to make sure this is a functional piece. So now as I use my paper just to kind of clean up the shape here at the bottom shoulder. Stretching out that stem some more. This is done over stages. Again, you don't want to you don't want to force it. If you're having to force it, you're going to pull that bubble when you don't want to. I've got that ball far enough away from the cup now that I should be able to pull the rest of the stem out on this heat. And John is uh, here today, so we're going to have him help me out on this. Uh, John, I don't have pipes over here for the foot or the, the punty, so if you could bring over some pipes for that, that would be great. Always watch your piece while you're working. Don't look behind you to talk to somebody. My stem just got a little off center while I was doing that. That's fixable. We got this pipe heating up for the foot of our wine glass. I'm going to make one more small adjustment to the position of the stem. And then we're going to add the foot to our glass. There we go. It's a little more centered now. When you're ready, John. John's going to go into the furnace with that pipe. He's going to gather up some glass. We're going to drop it right here on this graphite pad. And up. That glass is going to flow off nice and hot. Thank you, John. 
going to fuse these together and take a quick reheat. If your piece gets too cold, it will crack and shatter from thermal shock. So we're warming up the whole thing, but I'm really focusing the heat on the foot. John's got a wooden paddle nearby. He's going to use that to flatten this foot while I shape it up with the blades of the jacks. One second. And on please. And off. And John isn't really pushing on please. Uh, he's just letting me pull against him with the blades of the jacks. He's holding firm giving you a nice flat surface to ride against. Off, please. The work isn't really done with the paddle, it's done with the jacks, uh, but you need somebody with a, on, a uh, light touch with the paddle to make that shape work. Off and punty. Now, we're gonna transfer the goblet off of the pipe and onto another rod called a punty. I'm gonna cool that foot down just a little bit more. And then I'll take a flash of heat to warm the cup up while John is making the punty. Now a punty is another metal rod with some glass on the end. It's going to be shaped into a dome about a sixteenth of an inch off the end of the pipe. And that shape is important, but the critical part really is the temperature. If that punty is too hot when it comes, it'll permanently fuse to our glass. If it's too cold, it won't stick well enough. And then when I remove the glass from the pipe, it'll fall off onto the floor at the same time. So I'll cool it just a little bit, but it's just about the right temperature when it comes the first time. Take a moment to center it up and then use a couple drops of water to create some stress up here at the jack line. And if we've done our job correctly, a gentle tap will send a vibration through the pipe and into the glass, which causes it to pop right off. John did a little dip down there on the way over. That's the main thing that is doing is if there were any little chips of glass from the break off that fell into the cup, they will fall out uh, and then they won't get stuck inside. And John's gonna heat the lip of that up uh, enough that I can pull and tweeze and trim it. Now, how long that heat takes depends on a lot of things, the thickness of the glass, uh, the colors you're using, the temperature of your furnace, of course, but also things like the outside air temperature, uh, humidity level, barometric pressure, all of those things can have an effect. And so you don't set a timer, you just feel it in your bones when it's time. Uh, and that's something that only comes with experience. In about three seconds, John will take a nice deep flash and then he'll bring it back to me. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I saw it. Yep. A few little pulls of the tweezer. And then we just cut away that glass that's uneven up top. Now we've got a nice thin lip. That thinner lip is going to be much easier to drink out of. And then something with thick lips. Thick lips on wine glasses tend to create dribble glasses. So we've thinned it out, we've evened it out, and now John is going to grab a wooden paddle and where he's going to help flatten the lip while I stretch it open. In reality, he's not exactly flattening it. He's controlling it while everything else stretches. And that's going to make for a nice, even, flat top. And straight walls on our glass. And on, please. And on once more, off, and I think, I think we're done, yeah? All right. There we go, folks. Now this will cool down significantly. Uh, these colors will change as it cools. It's still about a thousand degrees right now. So we're gonna remove it from the stick. John's got a pair of gloves on. He's warming those up so we don't shock the glass with cold tools uh, when we go to remove it. Now, if we've done our job correctly, this punty will be very delicately attached and I can just use my butter knife to remove it. A few taps create stress. You ready? A gentle tap 